So, Karen, thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure. It's great to be here. I've been looking forward to this a lot, and I was just um, hoping that you could talk us through a little bit about you. I came to the U.S. in the late 1980s. I was very young. I, I don't know quite where I got the uh, the nerve to do this and to take this big leap to come figure out what my role should be in Silicon Valley. Um, so I came over, I was with HP at the time, mm. Um, and then we were here, my husband and I were here for a few years, and then uh, we then moved to Singapore. Wow. So we spent about four and a half years in Singapore uh, in the mid-1990s, and then the idea was that we were going to do around the world and go back to Europe from there, but it never quite worked uh, out that way. So one of the things that, um, that I know is that as you um, start to go through your career, especially in Silicon Valley, things change. What did you discover? Well, you know, my my career has taken lots of little twists and turns. So one thing um, that I would say is that, you know, you can never have a perfect plan. You've just got to, you know, go take some risks um, and uh, and just try different things. So my degree is in chemistry, mm. right? So it's like, where did that come from? Um, and so just taking that leap into high tech was a bit of a big jump for me. Um, and so I had to really quickly learn the technology. Um, but then I, I spent time in the field with customers. I've been in sales. Um, and just if, if an opportunity has come up, I really you know, thought about, is this going to stretch me? Am I going to learn? Am I going to grow? Am I going to have some fun? Um, and you know, I've taken some, some risks. I've taken demotions. I was a VP, vice president, and I went back to being a director because it was a, a job that I knew I was going to have a blast. And the, the other thing I would say too, it's really important um, to really have those sponsors and advocates. Um, so I can pinpoint through my career where I've had people who have been you know, not, not just supporting you, but you know, being that sounding board and being that advocate for you. And when I took that demotion, I kind of knew that I would have a way back because I was being sponsored and encouraged to take this, this new role. How did you, how do you use chemistry in marketing? <laughs> like how, how do the two even find each other? Well, it's, it's an art and a science, right? Yeah. Isn't it marketing? Literally, yeah. a science. Um, you know, th there's something, um, and actually I found this with uh, a lot of other uh, folks in marketing, they tend to have both, you know, the truly the art and the science. And if, they're, if their background, educational background is engineering, and actually a lot of CMOs do have an engineering background, that's the discipline, it's the data, it's the factual element um, of the role, right? That it is still a data-driven function, but there's like that creative piece has to come in. And so I have uh, some friends and peers who are musicians. Um, my personal thing is I love art, I love design, mm. I love the brick walls here in the studio. Uh, so you have to have something that's really that creative juice um, that kind of gives you that balance. Mm -hmm. And I think it's powerful to have the two. Mm -hmm. It's like left brain, right brain Absolutely. come together. Absolutely, it really is. So, um, and, and I wanna get to, um, well, we'll we'll actually talk about marketing, yeah. but before we do that, you also have a family. You've, you you yeah. have three children and so uh, three kids. So happily married for a long time. Um, he's my husband's British as well. So uh, we have a very very great sense of humor in our household. Mm. I will tell you that. <laughs> uh, I have two boys and a girl. Uh, and uh, my son has graduated. My uh, younger two are uh, both at college. Wow. And uh, both back at Duke. So I'm a Dukey, Duke fan. <laughs> let's let's dive in a little bit into um, into into what you're looking at right now, as, um, especially as you're looking at, at making some big changes, some big transformation changes. In and the industry has never been more. Um, exciting, I oh, think, yeah. than, than I've ever seen it. Um, I mean, the, the the pivots that we've made over time are huge, but this one I think is 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 the biggest one in in my career that I've seen and in the history that I've studied. How how do you how do you feel about oh, this right now? I feel so, I feel so the same. I, honestly, I actually think that marketing is the like white hot profession right now. I mm -hmm. really do. I think this is the best time to be a marketing professional, marketing communications professional. Um, 
and and I think it's sort of just all coming together is that um, you know our role in the company is uh, is changed and the expectations have changed so for for us the journey that we've been on is that we've been asked to be an accountable function so not a fluffy function but a really accountable function for revenue growth mm -hmm. um, and we've come a long way on that journey we actually um, had over five billion, I think it was five point four billion dollars of sales qualified opportunity that sales said, yes, it's net new business mm. to us, right? So that was the caveat, it had to be net new business. Um, and so we we closed over a billion dollars in terms of our conversion into mm -hmm. new business for Cisco. And so, and actually this year we're taking on a, qu a quota. We're actually taking a booking goal, wow. seven hundred million dollars. We're marketing actually is closing that business. Mm. by itself as a function. So that's a whole journey in of itself. I think also with digital and social, uh, and the customer is expecting us to change. They want to engage with the company mm -hmm. in a different way. They want to do it with digital and social. That customer journey is done online, like it is in your, you know, your personal life. Mm -hmm. uh, it's now done online. So marketing actually is leading that customer through that journey, mm -hmm. through digital and social. So the customer is expecting something different. And uh, I often say that marketing is the last function to be industrialized, mm -hmm. but it's the first to be digitized. In the valley here, I'm sure you've seen this too, Brian, there's so much marketing technology that's now available mm -hmm. um, that we actually, we can actually professionalize our function. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like a perfect storm. The expectation of the business has changed, customers' expectations has changed, mm -hmm. and now the technology and the tools are there to actually really do amazing work. So. I think it's, I hope you can tell, I think it's absolutely <laughs> the best time to be in marketing. It's a great it time really to have is. a science degree and be in marketing. It I is, it is. Um, <laughs> so uh, one of the one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was that was the customer journey. Yeah. And um, with, with, a, with a company the size of Cisco, where do you begin? How do you map that? I mean, it is, it's not as simple as one tweet equating to a it's purchase awesome. or a sale. Um, it, it's a part of the whole. So where, where do you where do you begin? So we are uh, beginning that journey ourselves, I, I will say. So it's and, and we've looked at consumer companies who do this well, and we're trying to learn and adopt as much as we can from from them. But um, for, for a company like Cisco, the first thing we have to do is make sure that we really understand who the customer is and that we're listening at every listening post, every every place the customer comes and engages with Cisco. Uh, and then this is where the data science comes in, right? Mm. That where it's really taking um, what you know about the customer, what they're willing to share with you on a human level, mm -hmm. right? In their own social and digital sphere, uh, how they've engaged with Cisco, where they've been on your digital uh, properties, um, when they've registered at an event, what classes have they been? What are, so it's taking all of that data and saying, okay, uh, Brian, so it's not, you know, Mr. Mm -hmm. So-and-so or job title, it's about that human connection. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, Brian, you know, we noticed that, and don't do it in a creepy way, but we, right. we know this is kind of what you're interested in. Can you help, can we help you with X? Mm -hmm. And so that you are providing so much value that you're helping them on their journey or you're helping them look smarter, you're helping them make better decisions. And so it's actually, I, you know, I challenge my team, we want our marketing to be so good, mm -hmm. is actually like a service. It's, it's almost like a concierge mm -hmm. service. You're really helping them uh, along their journey, which is a completely different way for us to think. Interesting, so how does that um, tie into customer support? Uh, is customer support and marketing starting to meld together? Oh, we, so we have a great relationship with customer support. So we know actually, I think it's like 47% of our traffic on Cisco.com is to get help and support. And we, we, we have actually made that an incredibly good experience for our customers. Because you think about it there, think about your personal life. You're either calling because you have a request or you have a problem, whatever, but you, there's a very specific need. Mm -hmm. um, so we are definitely, we learn what is not only the, for that support call, what is the issue, but do they have any feedback? What do they think about the product? What do they think about our pricing? And making sure that we get that information back into the company so we can do a better job of designing the product or pricing the product. Um, also, what we found is that when someone helps you and they give you a great customer service and a great experience, okay, that's, a good, that's trust, mm -hmm. right? You've earned my trust, you really helped me out. Okay, so now, 
I'm in a position where I'm going to really listen to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what we found is in our support organization, they may say, look, you know, the reason you keep having the problems with this product is because it's 25 years old. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe if you went to this product, you actually, it actually is a better deal for you. Mm -hmm. And so they're actually, you know, moving the customer on their journey as well. And mm -hmm. so it's all these things are connecting. Mm -hmm. All these functions are really starting to connect together. And part of that connection is is the actual employee or the employees oh, yeah, of Cisco. Absolutely. You have to have that communication internally in order for all of this to work. Um, my understanding is that you have an employee advocacy program that you're building. And um, how hard is that? How do, that must be a challenge to get everyone to communicate and connected, um, again, with customer service and the journey and all of these different things. How, how are you approaching that? Uh, what you're finding is that um, it's back to that, that human element, right? That, that a customer will always trust another human being and listen to them first, right? And so we want our employees to have that immense emotional connection with our company and our brand and what we stand for and our future. And, you know, because you can see when someone's really excited about who they work for. And if you're standing at the soccer field watching your kids game and someone says, well, who do you work for? Well, I work for Cisco. And, and you have this really engaged conversation. Um, that is an amazing advocate for your brand. And so we want to unleash our 70,000 employees. We'd love to unleash our partners' mm. employees as well um, to have them tell your story, mm -hmm. right? And to live it and breathe it. And there's a culture, there's a value set associated with your company and your brand. And, you know, we'll we'll talk about the Cisco family and that there is a certain type of person that works for Cisco. And it's true. Mm -hmm. It really is true. Because they live and breathe the brand and how they engage with our customers and their neighbors every single day. So we're, um, we've actually uh, unleashed, we've got about 4,200 of our employees today who uh, we've encouraged them to use social media one to two, four times. A little bit of a mixture of that personal mm -hmm. information. Again, it's about that value set and the culture as well as information about Cisco. Um, we'd like to get that to 20,000 mm -hmm. by 2017. Um, we also just recently brought our whole marketing team together and we all committed that all 1,500 of us were going to be social and, and ambassadors uh, for our brand and, and tell our story. Um, so it's incredibly powerful. Mm. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a big part of having your employees engaged mm -hmm. with knowing what we stand for, where we're headed, and that's the story that marketing should be telling everybody. Mm -hmm. And so speaking of story, uh, telling a story is not that easy, especially across the board. Now, if you were a single person in business, this would be a whole different conversation, right. but this is not what we're talking about here. We're talking about telling a story through now what's become a, a mega content juggernaut, not just not just Cisco, but almost any, every business out there has, has more content than they know what to do with. But how do you tell that story? now given what we know um, so i will t so this is a major transformation for us at cisco really completely rethinking about content i don't know if you know this but microsoft um recently uh, had a piece of research published that they said that from the age of the mobile phone explosion the attention span of a human being has gone to eight seconds right a goldfish is nine Wow. And so you've got eight <laughs> seconds to engage that person with something that, mm. th that content that's so relevant, that's so important and value to them that look, okay, you've now got my next nine seconds. So what are you going to tell me next? And so it's, we've got to think about how we tell that story. Um, and I'm not saying it all has to be in sound bites, but it has to be something that is compelling, that's engaging. Um, that it's in a format that it's mobile first. It's not, and so we think about how much text is that uh, going to involve in the future versus video and sound. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got to really think about content in a completely different way. And and I will tell you, I think, and maybe it's uh, a malaise of the high tech industry, but we are 
very factual. We are very descriptive mm. in our content. Um, and it's really boring. It's mm. a sea of sameness. Mm -hmm. And so we have to figure out how to really completely rethink how, how, we, how we engage our, uh, our employees, our customers, our partners with content that they need at mm -hmm. any one moment in time. Mm -hmm. And it's personalized for them. Uh, and it's something that it's very human. It's very simple to understand. It's not in this marketing speak gobbledygook. It's something mm. that, that it's it's human. It's like having a conversation. Mm -hmm. That's that's a great um, actually does a great transition because it's one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about when we first met. You had mentioned up on stage human to human, which I was just like beaming. Um, and and <laughs> and true. I'm curious what. Um, what you think about how to integrate human to human, this whole approach into um, into a company that size. I mean, we're talking about personalization, but but there's so many different people in an organization that size. How do you instill this behavior of believing in um, that human to human approach? It, it's a big shift for us. I think um, it's something that I think is more of a natural way to think if you're in a consumer company and you think about your persona, your profile of who you're targeting, and you usually give them a name, you know, Jane, Bob, whatever. Uh, so it's, we have to really rethink that, and also, frankly, um, think about the talent in our organization um, and, and really mix that up in terms of having folks that have that more of that mindset around experience marketing or creating that experience um, for that customer at every touch point. Um, so it, it's something that's cultural for us that we are going to have to really think through. Um, and that's everything from uh, we've just rolled out a complete new set of brand language training. So it's actually teaching our, our teams how to tell better stories. It's uh, injecting back in some creativity and innovation. Um, in terms of how we tell those stories as well. So it's it's a big shift for us in terms of just how we think about that person, that human being. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it, sometimes it can be as simple as when you're helping your kids with your homework. Read it out loud. Mm. Just, just read out loud what you've just written. Mm. And is that how you'd engage with a human being? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Right. Okay, so start over. And, and so it, it is, it's, we're on a journey. Mm. You know, we have to get there. It has to be where it's engaging personal content that's more like uh, entertainment, education, entertainment combination. That's mm -hmm. what we want to do. Oh, it's great. Um, I love that, the entertainment part, because I think people do want to be entertained. They do. Um, they they you know, do. They, they want to they have a laugh or they want to have a, an emotion on some level, something visceral that really strikes them. And just think about the last time you've read something from you know, a company, a corporation that's injected, you know, any other type of emotion than, than okay, that made me a little bit smarter. Mm -hmm. So th that we need to figure out how to engage much more of our senses when we actually mm -hmm. think about the content and the emotions that are actually, you know, that we're actually driving when we have that conversation with our customers. Oh, that's great. Now, when you look back on, uh, on where you're at now, let's say two years, five years from now, what are what are a couple of things that you really you really know that you want to come you really want to accomplish? A um, couple of things that that you know have to get done in order to be successful. Well, um, we've gone through. We're just actually starting this major transformation of marketing and communications at Cisco. So, uh, for the first time in the company's history, we've actually brought all of marketing and communications together mm -hmm. into one function. So, product marketing is no longer in engineering; it's now in marketing. Field marketing is no longer in sales; it's now in marketing. So, mm -hmm. the good news and the bad news of that: you've got no one to blame, mm -hmm. right? We're all we're all on the same team. Um, so we have painted a vision that we want to be a real-time, uh, innovative, personalized marketing team. Um, the concept that I share with the team is that, in that when engineering is creating a product, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, they go through this long life cycle of gates. Mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, I think it's called waterfall in terms of the process. And now sprints, yeah, so exactly the sprints. Mm -hmm. And now it's all about real-time, agile DevOps. It's highly iterative. What we need to move from is, as a company saying, we're going to have five campaigns for this quarter in these, you know, in these geographies. That's very linear. It's like the analog version. Um, we have to think about having a campaign every 10 seconds. 
engaging people you know, in very different ways. Instead of thinking about, okay, we're gonna launch all this content and forget about it, mm -hmm. we have to think more like journalists. Like how do I keep, um, how do I keep my customer in Germany called Joe, who's really got this, uh, you know, real need to understand more about security. Okay, well, how can I engage him? What do, what do I have that I can bring together and have that conversation with them? So it's much more of a journalist type of environment, an editor type of. So we're looking at very, very different roles mm. inside our marketing team. So. Uh, Chuck, who's our CEO, said, Kieran, start with a clean sheet of paper, mm. uh, which, as we said, is exciting, but a little bit daunting. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what we have. And uh, we want to be the best marketing function on the planet mm. uh, for our industry. So that's a great goal. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. It's a bit like, oh, OK, yeah, <laughs> that's what we want to do. But, you know, say to the team, if you shoot for here, you might end up here. But hey, you've still made a huge yeah. amount of progress. So. They call it, what do they call it, a BHAG, a big yeah, it's just Harry It really is, yeah. yeah. But what the heck? Yeah, why not? Life's not going to be boring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Now, you have a lot of young talent, too, that is ro constantly rolling into a, the organization, and, and they communicate differently, um, not just them, but also your customers and your channel and your partners. And, you know, this, this new generation communicates differently. I know um, just even with my 17-year-old daughter, she, she Snapchats more than she oh, is yeah. on Facebook or anything else. Have you had the emoji conversations? There's no text. It's yeah. completely emoji. Yeah, and I, yeah. I strangely, like, understand her, but yeah. then sometimes don't, and I have to ask her. Like, to get her to come down for dinner, I actually have to Snapchat the dinner, and then she'll <laughs> she'll come down. If I yell for her, she doesn't hear it. I don't know what's going on with that. But anyway, how do you, how are you seeing um, this younger generation communicating and changing the way we behave or at, at, and, and the way that we're starting to adopt these new new marketing um, uh, endeavors. Oh, I, I tell you, well, this is actually a real passion of mine. Um, and over my time at Cisco, I've really, uh, really brought in a lot of early career talent. And we want to do even more of that as much as we can. Um, because I tell you, it's not just how they communicate. They just they just have a completely different way of thinking. They're actually a breath of fresh air. They're a joy mm. to really have as part of the team. Um, and, you know, I have to smile because uh, one of the uh, new graduates who, who joined us said, you know, can I just ask you a question? On meetings, does that count as work? And I go, mm. well, you know, sometimes, but often not. But they just don't, they don't meet, discuss, plan, debate. They just get the work done, they do it. And they, they're so creative and innovative in terms of their ideas and a different way to think about and do things. Uh, of course, they're digitally native. Mm -hmm. So uh, anything that's, any tools in the digital and social sphere is just natural for them to be able to use. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our early career actually are reverse mentors uh, for uh, our later in career members of our team. Um, I think it's really important that you have the balance of the two because I, I think you need the experience and um, the wherewithal and the, the knowledge um, from, from some of your employees and leaders of your team, but also your early career can really, you know, it's, it's, a t it's very symbiotic and mm. it's, it's just a joy just to have that diversity in the team. It really is great. It's so um, speaking about that, how do you, as CMO of this organization, communicate down and up and sideways and across to get every everyone moving in the right direction? What's your style? What's your leadership philosophy? How do you stay productive and moving in the right direction to make all this happen? Uh, so the, it's actually a very timely question, Brian, because we're um, we just brought all of our for the first time ever. We brought all of our senior leaders together, actually in Austin, just a couple of mm -hmm. weeks ago, um, and it, it was an amazing event. It was absolutely amazing. It was very different. It was very creative uh, in terms of how we facilitated the session, and uh, we used music actually mm -hmm. as our analogy in terms of how each of us have voices, but when we come together we can actually, we sound amazing. Um, even for those of us who can't sing, mm. um, there is safety in numbers, I will <laughs> tell you that. But uh, so we're, we're thinking of different creative ways for to engage not just our leaders, but then how we take that story and our transformation journey back to our teams. Uh, we're also walking the talks. We have our own collaboration technology 
um, uh, spark that we use and so we've created these spark rooms where folks can dip in and dip out and exchange ideas and mm -hmm. you know whether it's uh, a video or just kind of how they're getting through their day um, and so we, we're just finding just different ways to actually uh, communicate um, just making sure that our leadership are around the team and uh, you know you're going through a big transformation you I think you physically need to also be present uh, and engage. We also have an open door policy where folks can come in and tell me I haven't asked Karen, you know, ways just to keep me grounded mm. in terms of what's really happening in the team and kind of the things that it's top of mind for them that we need to really sort of address together. So mm -hmm. it's, um, it's going to be a great journey ahead. But uh, I, I agree with you, communication is going to be a real way to help keep that engagement level high. Yeah, yeah, especially um, with all these different tools, how how you how you manage that and how you stay grounded. And you still have to do your job too. Yeah. So you know, between doing doing the two, that has to be pretty challenging. It it, it does, but um, you know, one thing that I've really tried to to do with with our leadership team is that. Um, I think if you are, uh, we talked about this with our kids, right? As in terms of look up, put you know, put mm -hmm. your phone down. But if you're, you, if it's it's back to that human connection and mm -hmm. uh, building that trust and respect. Um, it's you know, when you're together, be present. Mm. You know, don't don't multitask. Don't you know? Really, I'm talking to you, but I'm you mm -hmm. know, I'm doing this, um, and so. We're trying to make a commitment to each other to keep our meeting shorter, to, okay, if we're in the meeting, be in the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, my commitment in return is that we'll make them shorter so you have more work time, mm -hmm. so you're not doing your work at night. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's not what we're gonna have happen. But we're really, really thinking through culturally, how do we want to show up with each other and engage with each other, not just as leaders, not just as employees to managers, but as back to that human being, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. back to that human being. Again. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's going to be important, especially as we have turned into PowerPoint um, oh my gosh. Meeting, meeting people. As I know, I know, I fall into that category where yes. you know, it's just sometimes easier to talk around a screen rather than to people. It, uh, just think about the next time you're in a meeting where you're all online, whatever collaboration tool you use, and you're all looking at the same PowerPoint, and you're sitting next to each other. Right. So, okay, that that's that's mm -hmm. not right. Yeah. You know, and, and especially in marketing where you've got to be creative and engaging, you know, each other. It's just so we, we've got to balance how we use the tools and also, frankly, how we use our time to mm -hmm. make sure that we're we're really present and having those meaningful discussions. One of the things I wanted to ask you is if you were to start over, if you tomorrow you woke up tomorrow morning and you still had all your knowledge, but you were you were starting over in um, in your career. You got to take everything with you that you learned, except you had only two hundred dollars with you. What would you do to build your business, or build your personal brand, or get started? How would you go about building your career tomorrow with that knowledge? Build. Oh, that's a great question. Um, so I, I, it's back to really having folks around you that you know who can be your sponsor, mm -hmm. uh, which is which is still different than your mentor. Or it's somebody who's oh. really going to really. Uh, not only listen and guide you and coach you, but it's going to help you. It's going to speak on your behalf. Mm -hmm. It's going to make help make things happen. So, um, I think money will seed money will take you so far. But I absolutely believe it's all about building the right relationships. First of all, um, you got to also if you have a, if you're building a business, you got to basically make sure that you have built something that somebody really wants. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that is a game of, you know, try it, iterate. It's back to that, mm -hmm. that iteration, right? It's try it. If it doesn't work, try something else. Uh, personally, for me, um, I would love to have been a, an architect mm. or a designer. Mm. Uh, that, you know, we were talking earlier about the art and the science piece. I wish I could paint mm. real art. Um, so it's something that uh, I would use, I think, uh, even more of my creative Mm -hmm. side and talents um, and uh, you know really have something that folks go wow mm -hmm. you know that's added joy to my day wow. uh, so that that I think that would be awesome to do maybe maybe there's still time left for that there's plenty of time <laughs> plenty of time left well thank you so much for joining me here today I appreciate it Brian it's been a pleasure thank you thanks for having me mm -hmm.